Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck. I teach parenting, family communication, all through the lens of self-government. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about four skills to transform your parenting. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you four skills that everybody needs to know. And I'm talking everybody, no matter the age. I need the four skills, my children need the four skills, their grandparents need the four skills. And so these four basic skills, that's what I call them, need to be taught when the children are young. And if they're not taught, with, taught when they're young, it's never too late. You can teach them when they're older too. In fact, for many years, I did treatment foster care for troubled teens. They were all between the ages of 12 and 18, and these were the first four basic skills that we started teaching those teens so that they can learn to govern themselves. So let's talk for a moment about self-government. So we are looking through the lens of self-government today as we look at our family relationships and the way that we solve problems and communicate as a family. So in this video, you're going to meet some members of the Simpson family, and we're going to be talking about how these skills have helped them in their home and in their family. And we are going to learn what what some of these four skills look like so that you can also have the transformation that you desire for your home too. I hope you're going in the direction of self-government because that's what these skills are definitely meant for is helping a person learn to regulate and master themselves. Self-government is being able to determine the cause and effect of any given situation and possessing a knowledge of our own behaviors so that we can control them. So this means we examine ourselves again and again and we recognize that what we do in our daily interactions actually makes a difference on how other people treat us, view us, or how we even feel when we're with other people. Many people don't think of those things. They start thinking that everybody else is to blame for how bad a relationship might feel. But really wise, discerning parents, parents who are very deliberate in their actions know that what they do and say with their own self-government makes a difference for how self-governed their children will be as well. And Candace Simpson is here with a couple of her children to talk to us about that today. And Candace, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank Avonlea, you. thank you for coming too and sharing some of your thoughts with everybody and Sienna. So I know we don't have the whole family here, but this is all that would fit on the couch. Yes. So <laughs> this is what we're putting on the couch today. Um, we're talking about the four basic skills and we're talking about self-government. And I know that your family has been working at self-government for a long time. I mean, just like me, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're never done, right? With mastering self-government and, and learning it. So how have the skills and principles of self-government helped your family? I think there's so many facets of self-government that have helped our family, but I, I think the pre-teaching, like we talked about, just kind of setting that family um, tone of what we're going for in our rules and our structure prior to it happening. And then just having a structure set up that the kids know what to expect, mm -hmm. that they're expecting um, calmness, they're expecting whatever it takes to try to get things to run smoothly. Um, they know how to accept a no answer. They know how to disagree appropriately. So it opens the communication no matter what the answer is mm -hmm. from the parent or from the child that it can be done in a seamless way that everybody can keep the harmony mm -hmm. and just kind of accept and move on if it's a no or rejoice when it's a yes or any of the above. It can keep the same tone if yes. we're all in line. Yes. It puts everybody on the same page, doesn't mm -hmm. it? And I love that because so often parents and children are actually not on the same page with each other. Mm -hmm. And this is where we get a lot of frustration and struggles because parents are wanting one thing to happen, but what's coming at the children is stress, mm -hmm. you know, worry, what did I do? You know, and anxiety and you know, your children have had a mommy, they don't realize how lucky they are, but had a mommy who's been focusing on her own calmness for probably all the part of your life that you even remember, Sienna that your mom's been going, okay, I've got to be calm. That doesn't mean she's perfect every second of every day, but she's working on that. And there are many children who their parents literally lash out at them all the time. And then the, the children go on the defensive and the parents and the children don't have good communication. And I know your family works on communication and trying to have that good communication with each other. And that makes a really big difference. So let's talk about these four basic skills. So Avonlea, can you tell me what is one of the four basic skills that you remember? 
to accept a no answer. Accepting a no answer. This is an important skill, isn't it? Yeah, why is it important to accept a no answer? Do you know? Because it can give love to your family. Ah, that's a really good one. It shows your family that you're not taking it personally, right? That you can keep the love even if sometimes the answer has to be no, right? Wow, that was really grown up for you to say. That was a super good comment. Thank you for sharing that. What about you, Sienna? What um, one of those four basic skills, or maybe you can even just list some things that you think about those four basic skills. So we've got following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, and then also disagreeing appropriately. Which one of those maybe is your favorite one? Probably disagreeing appropriately. Okay, why disagreeing appropriately? Because I think it helps you see other people's point of view in like a calm way and understanding what you've done wrong in a calm way as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think when you get to be in your adolescent years, right, in your teen years, even more you have a lot more thoughts in your head, right? You start seeing more and understanding more and then you kind of want other people to understand it too, right? So I could see where disagree appropriately would be a really important skill for somebody your age, but actually she's been doing it since she was how old? Just two. <laughs> two? Yeah, like just a little tiny thing. Because when I met you, Sienna, for the first time, your mom came to one of my three-day trainings that I do, mm -hmm. the Parenting Mastery Trainings. We called them couples retreats back then in the old days. And she came to one of those, and you were tiny. You I were just like a, a little oh, yeah. thing, just a little thing. And so she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, is my child too young? And I said no. And then she went home and started teaching you how to disagree appropriately and everything else, which is so great. So then some of our other skills are following instructions, right, and accepting consequences, which is so important because we can't learn self-government if we won't accept consequences. So I'd like to talk about following instructions first, if we could. We're going to talk about the steps to following instructions, which really is the basic of all of the four basic skills. But before we get to that, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. You're going to want to be notified when more videos like this come out so that you can learn the skills that you need for your family. All right, so let's talk about following instructions. So if a person can learn following instructions, that makes all of the other skills easier, right? Because following instructions has these five steps in it that actually are contained in almost all of the other skills, or at least some of them are in some of those other skills. So what is the first step of following instructions? Looking at the person. Yes, looking at the person. So this is important. Um, this is important for mom as well as you, okay? Have you ever had one of those moments, mom, when you've been like, you know, you're like yelling at everybody, get your stuff, we gotta go, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I think every mom has had, <laughs> it is, the we gotta go moment is the worst moment, right? Mm -hmm. It's like the worst in every parent comes out. They're like, tick, 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 come on, come on, right? And then at the end you get in the car and go, why did I do that? Why did we get to that level, you know, before we came? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So those moments you're not looking at the eyes of the children right? You're just hollering things out. We've all done that. There is a different feeling that you have about the children than when you take the time and you look right at them, right? There's a different, a different connection that occurs, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is. So um, when you want to enjoy your parenting more, and I think people don't realize this, then what you need to do is look at the people. So in our house, we have the upstairs and the downstairs. And I was notorious for going to the top of the stairs and hollering, hey, so is out, come up here or bring this or whatever. And I'm because I'm thinking, I don't want to go clear down there and then come clear back up, right? But then there was this point where I realized I am missing out on the opportunity of connecting with my children mm -hmm. and for them to actually feel my heart in this interaction. Now it just becomes about the stuff that I said instead of about who we are. So that look at the person is enormous. And so I told myself, you know what? I'm going to walk all the way down the stairs and I'm going to go find them and I'm going to look at them and then I'm going to give an instruction and then I'm going to walk all the way back up the stairs, you know, and I'm going to do that every single time. It changed my life 
to tell myself, it's okay to walk down the stairs. You've got to get to the eyes of the person. So looking in the eyes is huge. If you want your mom to feel really how sincere you are and you disagree appropriately, look in her eyes. Let her see it. Let her feel it. Because then she'll really understand. It's, those eyes are the windows to the soul. It's amazing. So look at the person is, is first. The second steps are keep a calm face, voice, and body, right? Calm face, voice, and body. So that's super important. And then we say, okay. Now I know some people, they don't necessarily like to say, okay. They think maybe it's kind of an attitude or something like that. Um, you could choose to say, yes, ma'am, or something else if you wanted to. But I like okay, because when you say okay, you're saying, I'm okay with you telling me to do something. I'm okay with you being my mom, right? And then, and she's also telling herself when she says, okay, I'm okay. Hey, look at that. I'm okay. And how great is it that you can recognize for yourself, I chose to be okay, because then that means you're that much closer to self-government, which is huge. So when we follow instructions, Sienna, after we look at the person, keep a calm face, voice, and body, say okay. We could also do something else right there. If we don't say okay, what could we do? Disagree. Yeah, we could disagree appropriately. And um, we probably don't want to do that every time, right? Because mm -hmm. that could get a little bit much <laughs> for everybody. Although it's happened, right? Yeah. It's happened. The smart ones, they start disagreeing appropriately every time. And then the smart parents go, well, maybe they need to accept no answers just a little bit more, mm -hmm. right? Which is one of those other skills. So they can always disagree appropriately, which is that whole other skill. And then after that, you do the task immediately, which means right now, and then you check back. And what happens when you come back and you check back? The parent congratulates you for doing it. Yeah, the parent praises you, right? Do you like to be praised, Avonlea? It feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. So then mom will tell you what a great job you did when you followed that instruction. So those are the basic five steps. So let's talk really quickly about some of these other skills and their steps so people can see how they relate to each other. And just so you know, on this channel, there are dedicated videos for each one of these four basic skills. So you can find those as well after you're done getting this wonderful overview of these skills and see how, seeing how they're connected together. So let's talk about accepting no answers then and criticism. What kind of no answers have to happen sometimes at your house, mom? What do you think? Staying up later. You know, sometimes we get asked, can, I, can we have 20 more minutes? Can we please stay up late? And depending on what our next morning is, that would have to be a no answer. Yeah, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. I think come nighttime, nobody wants to go to bed. Mm -mm. Everybody, and nobody wants to wake up in the morning either. No. So that's no. an instruction they have to follow in the morning. <laughs> yeah. And you gotta get the no answer happening at night. Ah, oh, that, that's a hard one. That's a really hard one. There's probably other things too, like uh, no hitting your sister or no climbing on the whatever, or mm -hmm. you know, those kinds of things, right? Definitely. That are constantly happening mm -hmm. at the house. So parents could end up thinking that they're giving no answers all the time, mm -hmm. right? Um, all the more reason that you really make sure your no answers are good and connective. Mm -hmm. So to give a no answer, I'm going to share those steps. To give a no answer, you look at the person, you keep a calm face, voice, and body. You say okay or disagree appropriately. Check that out. Three steps that are all contained in following instructions as well. And then you drop the subject. So this is huge. You, when you can drop the subject, then you're choosing that you can be okay no matter what. Okay, so let's talk about accepting consequences then. The skill accepting consequences is kind of like mixing following instructions and accepting no answers together. And so it really, we already know all the steps. So you look at the person, you keep a calm face, voice, and body. You say, okay, or ask to disagree appropriately. Then you do the consequence, which is like doing the task immediately. And then you check back and then you drop the subject. So it's like all the steps for those two skills all in one. But it's important to accept consequences. I think for most people, that's the skill they don't think about as much, is accepting the consequence. And they'll allow people to get really frustrated and angry and moody because there's a consequence. What happens to your home dynamic if people don't accept consequences? It can become intense really quickly. <laughs> it, can, it can feel like a power struggle major. 
Mm-hmm. And so I just think that accepting consequences is something that you kind of do have to pre-teach. Like, hey, mm-hmm. we have this structure set up and we're all trying to follow, you know, our best line of defense and the things that we need. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if those things aren't followed, there's consequences that we know will you know, be coming and realize that that's something that you're choosing, which I think is so huge. Mm-hmm. When kids hear, you know, you're not following this instruction, so therefore you're choosing to have a consequence. For me, I feel like it's really big because this life is about agency and it's about choices. And I think that even from a young age, when kids can connect, oh, my parents aren't inflicting this consequence on me. I chose this consequence. I chose this from my behavior. I chose this from either not following instruction or doing something outside the perimeters of what's allowed in our home. And therefore, this I chose the consequence as well. Yeah. So then they feel the power of knowing, well, I can also choose not to have a consequence next time. Yeah, It's not just like this consequence just happened to me. So I think it's really good because it teaches your kids not to be victims, but to be agents and to act and how important self-government can be and um, just having power in your life and over the things that happen. So Yeah, that is so powerful. I need to start having you teach with me. I see that now. (laughs) You're very good. That That was a great description. And I love how you start at the very beginning. Like, okay, well, if a person's going to be able to accept consequences, you gotta teach them. Mm -hmm. everything that they need ahead of time and not only that but you've got to teach them that this is their choice Mm -hmm. they picked it and so they have to accept it so that they can make a new choice for the future that so in the end accepting consequences can be a very empowering moment it doesn't have to be a you've been bad kind of a moment instead it can be this moment where they go okay well I know what I should have done and so now I'm gonna, you know, think about that and make sure that I can do better the next time. And you might even practice it the next time, mm-hmm. for the next time. Yes. Yeah, ah, that's awesome. That is fantastic. So I have, I have really noticed that's probably been the biggest thing with consequences. So they're like, why would you do this? I was like, oh no, I didn't do this. Remember, you chose. And they're like, oh dang it. <laughs> okay. Oh, now that you mentioned yeah. it, and I so, guess I did. But it is very empowering at the end of it all when they know, oh, okay, I can choose differently next time. This isn't just something that happens. It's a yeah. choice. So. Well, which, which moves them forward instead of holds them back. I think mm-hmm. a lot of times people feel like a correction moment or when you get a negative consequence, that somehow this is holding you back or pushing you down and controlling you. But in reality, if it's done right, when a person accepts a consequence, And if the parent knows how to correct, which obviously you know the skills, right? We've talked about those kinds of things and you've had training in that. But when you correct in a way that's positive and calm and they know the skills for how to accept a consequence, the whole thing can be empowering. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, okay, mom, you're right. I did it the wrong way. Well, let's work on it the right way. Let's fix it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then it's just about fixes, little fixes, which is just part of life that we can accept, right? We can just accept them. Oh, I love that. So Sienna, let's talk about disagree appropriately. I know that we have a whole other video that's just about disagree appropriately, so we don't have to hit absolutely everything. But I do want to hear how disagree appropriately helps your relationship with your mom. I think it makes it like more calm and like you see their point of view too and it's like, okay, but you did this, so you got that. And so I think it's just like a way that you that it helps Mm -hmm. make it calmer when you give. So when she's correcting you and you say, can I disagree appropriately about it? You're thinking, I can be calm because I can talk to mom about it. I can tell her something. I can tell her how I'm feeling. I think that's super important. So let's talk about the steps to disagreeing appropriately. So to disagree appropriately, you look at the person, you keep a calm face, voice, and body. You say that you understand the other person's point of view, then you share your point of view. You listen to what they have to say and you say okay and then you drop the subject. So disagreeing appropriately is one of those skills like Sienna is talking about that really can transform our relationships. Okay, so Sienna, um, when you're choosing to be calm, do you feel like you're in a battle or do you kind of have a different feeling like you're powerful maybe or something? How does it feel for you? Kind of like, okay, I... If I just kind of drop it, maybe it'll like turn out like 
maybe she'll say yes if I like stop talking about it. But then it's like <laughs> you don't. You're not like she's gonna say yes if I drop it. No, it's like you just like you're not go you're not manipulating. Mm-hmm. You're not saying okay, I'm gonna do this and then she's gonna do this and feeling like you can control her because you can't, right? So I love that. I love that you're not trying to control her with it, but you're saying, well, there, but there is another option. She could listen to what I say and maybe see it from my point of view and decide to give me what I wanted right now, right? To be honest, dropping the subject can bring that sometimes because based on the timing that they're asking or what's going on when you have you know, more time to talk about it or if you have a moment right then, sometimes it can open up that dialogue and mm. say, oh, or there, there was parts of that that I didn't see as the parent or there, there was parts of it that she didn't see as the child. Mm-hmm. That's super insightful because the dropping the subject actually just gives you time. Mm-hmm. It gives the parent time to talk, to think about it, mm-hmm. and maybe even to ask further questions yes. if they feel like they need to. Mm-hmm. That's a super good insight. Mm-hmm. I love that. Okay. Oh, this has been so wonderful to talk about these four skills. They really do transform people, they right? Do. Do. So how would you say that they have transformed you as a parent, Candace? As a parent, I would say it's transformed me in the sense that when, you know, you're introduced to these principles, you're wondering, okay, how am I going to integrate that? How am I going to remember these steps? At first I was like, oh, can I really do this? Like you've said a lot of times. And then it turns into just like a way of life and it turns into a family culture and it turns into such an exchange of respect when it's happening that I think people, the children and the parents can see immediate results. Mm -hmm. It can instantly change your relationships. It can change the feeling of respect. It can change, you know, the knots in your stomach that you used to get about when things didn't go well. You know, it just, whether you're in public or in private, it kind of just sets a framework that works for everybody. Mm-hmm. The kids aren't surprised. The parents aren't surprised. There's, yes. you know, there's not a lot of that going on. So there's just a lot of comfort and peace in the structure mm-hmm. of knowing that our goal is to self govern ourselves. Mm-hmm. And if there's triggers or if there's things coming up that need to be worked on, you can reassess yourself as a parent. You can reassess how it's going with the children. There's a lot of factors of how, you know, you can, you can work things out and it can always be a calm Mm -hmm. situation. So I think it changes everything. You know, there's a lot of cliche statements around raising kids, the terrible twos, the horrible threes, the teenage years. And like, that's like their whole life, you know? You're like, wait a minute. Those are the golden years. I tell people that all the time. I'm like raising your children. Those are the golden years. Those are the years you look back on forever and say, Oh, remember this, remember Mm -hmm. this. Oh, I wish I had that again. Oh, I wish I wasn't so old, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and now that my children are all growing up and going, I know that I, well, I mean, I knew that then too, actually, I, I wasn't going to listen to terrible twos and, and those types of little, Mm -hmm. you know, cliche statements that people say, do you know, I love that you're talking about culture and creating this unified culture, this family culture, because that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And these four basic skills, honestly, are just the start, right? Because what you're talking about is the full teaching self-government system. Like you knowing the five teaching styles for the parents, as well as the meetings that you have, as well as the tone elements and how to be calm and the steps to being calm when you feel like you're going to lose it and stuff like that. I mean, there's just so many other things that you're talking about with this transformation of your family culture. I would like to give everybody who has been part of this video and stayed with us all the way to the end, a free gift that is going to help you on your self-government journey. So I have a calm parenting toolkit that has 10 lessons in it all about calmness and understanding some tools for calmness that can change your interactions with you and your family and your spouse, everybody in your life, really. So below this video in the description section, there is a link. It says teachselfgov.com slash toolkit. Click that link and it will take you to the, the Calm Parenting Toolkit from from me as a gift. It's Teaching Self-Government Lesson 101 Calm Parenting Toolkit and you can have it completely for free. And this will start you on the journey that Candace and her girls have been on for now quite some time and it's been truly transformational to them and I know that it can be transformational to you too. Click the link now. We'll see you there.